buddy Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. And we're continuing our look at classic games. And this is a classic, classic one. Uh, this game originally came out in 2001, which doesn't seem like it's 16 years ago now. But I remember... 15, but still. <laughs> well, if you're including this year. But anyhow. Yeah. A while ago. And when I first saw Age of Steam on the internet, I saw a picture of it and I thought, yeah, no. Because it looks really bland. It looks like they just drew green hexes with track on them. See, I saw it and I thought, hmm, I love 18X. I got to try this. Just everyone's raving about this new train game. Yeah, so it certainly came out to high accolades. And there have been permutations of it in the last 15 years. Um, Steam and uh, Railroad Tycoon and, and... And many, many expansion boards and expansion <laughs> oh, things. Oh, my goodness. But this is the classic game when it started them all. We're going to take a look at it now from our perspective years later. Now, there's a lot going on in Age of Steam, so we'll start with the, the points first. Uh, on this board here, you're going to keep track of your income, and at the end of the game, your income is going to be worth three points times wherever your income is. You are also going to get a point for each piece of track that you have placed on the board. And players are going to keep track of where their tracks are. They're going to be connecting tracks from city to city with discs of their color. Players are also going to lose three points for each share that they've taken over the course of the game. Now, at the beginning of each round, players are going to decide if they want shares. Each share is worth $5. You start with $10, so you start with two shares. And at the beginning of each round, you really can take as many shares as you want. So if I took three more shares at the beginning of a round, I'm going to get $15 that I can spend. Dollars, by the way, are this pile of tiddlywinks here that are in uh, denominations of $1, 5 and 25 Players are then going to bid on turn order, and each person is going to bid until you decide to pass. Once you pass, you drop out. The, last, the first person to drop out is going to go last, and you can see it goes up to six players and pays nothing. After that, each player pays half of whatever they bid, and the last two players have to pay the full amount of their bid. Now, bidding is important because it allows you to go first in the game, but also it allows you over here, each player in turn order is going to pick one special action. Most of these special actions will take place during the game. One of them, this one here, the locomotive, happens immediately, and you will immediately raise your engine up to the next level. You can go all the way up to six lengths. Then players are going to take turns on the game board itself. Now, players each can build. They're going to be building trains first. Now, if someone picked first build, which is one of the special actions, they get to build first, otherwise it's done in turn order. And if someone picked engineer, they can build four tracks pieces. Otherwise, everyone builds three track pieces maximum. Now, the track pieces are going to cost different amounts of money based on whether there's terrain, based on whether you're connecting them to one of these towns, based on if you're crossing another train, based on the terrain. And I'm not going to get into all the different costs, but players are going to just try to connect different areas on the board. If a player has picked the special action uh, urbanization, they have the opportunity to go over here and pick one of these cities, which is A through G, H, and place that city on the board. When they do that, they're going to randomly put a couple goods. You're gonna, you need like a little bowl or something to put goods onto that city. You'll notice that there's goods on all these different cities. What you're trying to do is deliver goods from one city to the next. So after everyone has done building tracks, each player has the opportunity to make two deliveries. Again, this is done in turn order. Unless someone has picked first move, that person gets to move their goods first. And so players are going to take turns. So let's say I want to deliver this black cube. I can deliver it to a black city. That's the, the, the color of the city shows what cubes they want. So I'm going to move it across this and if I was the yellow player I would my income would go up one. I can move it as many different tracks as I want. So let's say uh, I had another connection down here which I also owned and maybe there would be a red cube in this city. I could go 
one, two, and move it up here. However, the maximum number of links you can move is equal to your engine track. So if I want to move it across four different things, I would need to have four links. When I move it across multiple things, my amp is going to go up one for each one that I cross over. If I cross over someone else's color, which I'm allowed to do as long as I started my own train track, maybe this one would be yellow and then this one would be red and then the next one would be yellow. So I would get two, but I would also give red one on the income track. And so players are going to move these cubes. When a cube gets to a city, that cube is discarded and goes away. And players are going to be doing their income up here, keeping track of their income as they deliver the different cubes. And that income is going to provide them with money each turn. Uh, although they're going to have to pay, it's going to give them money minus the amount of shares that they've taken each turn. So you're going to have to pay money, and if you run out of money, then you have to lower your income, and if you run out of income, then you're eliminated from the game. Eventually, you'll get so high on the income track that there is this income reduction, here minus two, which knocks you down every turn when you're in here. When you're in here, you lose four every turn. When you're here, you lose six. And if you manage to get up in this spot, you lose eight. So you're always going to be kind of knocked down. Also, at the end of a turn, players are going to roll dice for each side of the board. There's a white numbered side and a black numbered side. They're going to roll dice. So let's say I roll dice. And you can see I rolled a five and two sixes. So this five comes out into the five white city and two, these two purple cubes come out into the six city. So I look here on the board, here's the five white city, gets another purple cube, the six white city gets two more purple cubes. Before this happens, one, if the player has picked the special action production, they can add two more good cities track, hoping that they get out on the board. You'll also notice that if someone adds the new cities A through H, they also have cubes that have a possibility of coming out on the board, and they'll come out on the board based on the numbers that are rolled above them. That's pretty much all the special actions. You'll notice here the turn order also uh, is going to, that, that gives you kind of an advantage on your next turn in the bidding. And we do income, like I said. Remember, you get money for this, but you are going to subtract shares. Also, you're going to subtract your links. So the more links you have, the more money you're going to pay. And we keep going, on, and we start another round. After a certain number of rounds, the game will end depending on the number of players. And then we total up points, and whoever has the most points is the winner. Also, this is the Age of Steam map. The original Age of Steam comes with just the single map. However, you can buy many, many more maps. And because these cities are numbered here, you can put, you know, th this will work with any of the boards. Although each of the different boards has differentiations in rules and sometimes there's special rules for the different boards. Now, let's talk first about how we felt about it before any of these other ones showed up. Before Steam or, or Railroad Tycoon and all that. What did you think about this the first time you played it? I liked it a lot. I didn't like it as much as 18X, I'll be honest. But 18X I rate a 10. This one is a little less. We'll get into my rating later. It's not low, though. Trust me, it's a great game. But I was underwhelmed because I compared it to 18X, <laughs> which is the king of train games. Well, see, I haven't. I didn't play this one, and I didn't play his game that came. I didn't play 18XX before I played this one, and I hadn't played his. He had a game leading up to this. Was Stephenson's Rocket like leading up to this yeah, one? Yeah, Stephenson's Rocket was before this. Right, and so I didn't play in that, so I played this, and in my very first game of Age of Steam, what do you think happened? You got creamed. Well, what, even worse than that. I went bankrupt. Oh, you went bankrupt, right. yes, because you took out... <laughs> right, because you're like, ah, uh, and then you just seem, you pretty much have to take a loan out. You, you can yes, get away yes. without doing it, but you have to take a loan out, and then I took more loans, and pretty soon I was bankrupt. And <laughs> I was like, what? Because when you get to a certain point, you, you can't take any more loans. You, you went all the way to the 10? That's, that's not the point. <laughs> the point is, though, me and another player who were playing at the same time, we were both like... Oh, because we never played a game like that before. Yes. So we restarted it, and then we really enjoyed it. But, wow, was it... It was like nothing I played before. See, he came down. I had never played anything like this before. So he was like, oh, what is this? Yeah. it's. I mean, it's got everything. It's got pickup and delivery. It's got route building. It's got so many great aspects to the game. But there's one part of the game that as time went by, I became less enamored with... And that is really a huge part of the game. People don't 
I mean, that newcomers won't think it's a big deal, but for, for pros they will, and that is the auction. The auction of Age of Steam is incredibly important because... It's the well, most important. Right, but you, I mean, you're not thinking about that. You're thinking, oh, I'm laying out trains and doing this. Well, that's all secondary. Knowing when to say, I'm out of the auction, and when to win that auction is a yes. really big deal in this game, and if you mess that up, you will lose, and Age of Steam is extremely unforgiving. Yes, yes, it's very unforgiving, and you have to decide when to turn that you want to urbanize or when to turn turn that you want to plus one loco. You know, there's because every action is good in different parts of the game, and you need to know when you want to go for that certain action that will upgrade something for you and make you better in the game. And that's and the auction, how much money is it worth? Because you have very little money and you don't make a lot of money. I mean, eventually you get to the point where you're running like a five train and you're able to ship something five routes along and you actually make some money and then you start getting victory points but it takes a while to get to that it, you, it takes a couple of turns before you're actually earning back money and paying off your loans and you need to really be careful as you go along because you could spiral out of control if you can't manage your money can't do deliveries and then you could go bankrupt like tom did in his first game but i've seen a lot of people go bankrupt in the game the first time they played because it's a possibility this game also yeah this is not even though a lot of heavy Euro gamers like this game. I'm hesitant to call this a Euro because this game is very mean towards each other. Not just in the auction, but like Jason can be Trash. ready to make his main move and I can block him with track. That's one way to mess people yeah. over. But also, he could have everything banked on moving a cube and I can move it first. And I might move it one spot. Just to deny. Just to deny yes. him from getting six and I've seen people get angry and I just before. Yes, yes, yes. I've seen people get angry in Age of Steam also. But yes, when you do delivery, every step is vital. When you deliver, when you, you know, when you build your track, if you get your track there first, because track is worth points at the end, you know, the deliveries are clearly important because deliveries is what make you money. And, you know, if, if I see one blue cube left and he's trying to deliver blue, I'm going to deliver blue before him. So I'm going to make sure to bid high enough to get first in turn order just to make sure. And that's where the bidding in turn order comes into play. It's a very... It's a very rough game um, that you have to, you know, you have to have strong skin to play this game because other people will do a lot of things that will mess with your plan. And once your plan gets messed with, you really spiral out of control in this. Right. So there's some things I'm not a big fan of in the game. One, I already mentioned it looked bland. It still looks bland. I'm, I'm amazed at how people, I, I wish the game looked a little better. I'm not saying it, it's functional. But like when Railroad Tycoon came out, people were like, oh, so this is what this game would look like if it was pretty. Yes. Although that may have gone too far the other direction. <laughs> um, another thing I, I, I do not like, personally, the artificial catch-up mechanism and how you'll do weird things like Jason might be about to score, and instead of scoring four, he'll deliberately do a score of three just so he doesn't go into the next income bracket. Yes. Which is like real-life taxes sometimes. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. So now let's talk about in comparison. Mark Wallace released a streamlined version of this called Steam, and he also did the Age of, uh, it's called, it was Railroad Tycoon, and now they call it um, Age of Empire, I forget, Age of Empires, not Age of Empires, but um, yeah, I forget Railways the of the World. Yes, Railways, Railways of, the world. of the World, that's it. Now, I'll, I'll go first, and then you can say what I think. I, think, I like both those games better than Steam. Railways of the World is very sprawling and it's all over the place and it gives you tons of freedom and you can build wherever you want. So there's less fighting each other in the game. And, uh, but I love the beautiful components of it and how neat it looks. I like it better than Age of Steam because of that. Although I will give Age of Steam, hey, you were the grandfather, respect. Steam is more of a straight up replacement to Age of Steam for me because it lowered the tensions on the auction so it wasn't as critical. In fact, you can play a version without the auctions, which I actually prefer. And it made the whole thing more straight about putting out track, and you can still block each other. I just thought it was a, it was a slightly more forgiving game, and so I enjoyed it more, even if it did look pretty similar to Age of Steam. And in fact, 90% of Steam slash Age of Steam maps are interchangeable. So I like both games better than Age of Steam. However, I again, I respect Age of Steam for what it did. It was groundbreaking when it came out. No, I... I have all of them. I have Railroad Tycoon, I have Railways of the World, and I have Steam. And I have plenty of extra maps of for Age of Steam slash Steam. I like the way he streamlined Steam. I think 
you know, this was his first creation of this, or one of his first creations of this, and he streamlined it in a good way, I think. So you like Steam better? I do like Steam a little bit better than this, um, because it's more streamlined. Obviously, your bidding and everything goes... Your bidding for the powers right away as opposed to bidding for turn order and then picking the powers. There's slightly different things that I think made it a little bit better, um, but they're both great games. One thing about these games that I really find good is there's minimal luck. And to me, I like minimal luck in a game because then it really brings out skill. And the only luck you have is what cubes get drawn out. Which and is some in, luck. I mean, that in, can be a deal. And that's more in Steam because in this one, the cubes are already lined up. All the cubes are out on that little mat where in the original version, the cubes were all out. So you knew what cubes were going to come up next. So they're all out there in the little C1, D1, in the little spaces to come out. Um, in Steam, you actually draw them out of a bag. So it's a little more random, I'd say. But um, either way, there's no minimal to no luck, 1% luck maybe in this game. And I like that about this, that you really have to have the skill to do it because it's not rolling dice and hoping for a random number. It's just, you know, you need to plot everything out and do it well. Using my mental powers, I bet you like this better than Railroad Tycoon now. Yes, I do. Because this is a tighter game. Railroad Tycoon is very free. Yes, yes, I do like this better. All right. And... One thing we didn't mention is um, on the bot. Let's see. I, I believe this went up to six players. It goes pretty high, actually. Two to six, yeah, three to six yeah, players. Six. And I've played it with every count. I know I have, and it's very different. It's a yes. very different. Six players is a mean game. So it's three yes. actually, but six is like super crowded. Exactly, and especially to try to get the power you want each turn for six ah. players. It's, it's you're fighting because you really want that urbanization to upgrade. Or What's your something. favorite map? Do you have one? Um, I don't have a favorite map. I like a lot of maps. They actually made a map of, of the, the surface sun. of the sun. The Come on sun, now. That's, they have... There's a, there's a space map. There's, there's a zombie there's, map. There's a zombie map, yeah. Uh, I mean, they're all good. There's like My the, favorite is Korea, but just, I like that there's two different parts of it. Yeah, the England map, the one where there's like little canals and you have to follow the path of canal. Everything... I mean, all the maps are unique and they've added different things, different rules in with each map. Um... I don't think any maps are bad. I think that... Some maps are really tight, though. Like, for example, Italy is a really tough, skinny map. There are some maps yes. that are going to be harder than others, and some maps don't support higher number of players because there's just not room on them. Yeah, and they make them purposely. They make maps that are for three players specifically now. So, so what's the awesomeness rating of Age of Steam? Eight. Ooh, pretty high. For me, it was actually, I think, a nine at one point. But it's dropped down considerably because I find it almost replaced. But once again, I do look at this and say, as a design piece of work, an amazing thing that Martin Wallace did. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.